Hi, I'm Brad, and I'm watching everything that you're doing right now, including you that's watching this on the toilet. I'm watching you right now. Ever since this device came out about a week ago, I've been seeing some things trending on journalist websites, but mostly those journalist websites are just posting what they're seeing on social media websites like Twitter or X or whatever the crap you want to call it. There is this surprisingly big trend that's kind of happening that people were not expecting at all whatsoever. And it's people going outside and touching grass while wearing a headset. Weird. While the articles have been mostly overtly negative to people doing this, I want to kind of be the uh, devil's advocate in saying this is kind of the main benefit of this device to begin with. And I'm going to kind of talk about my experiences myself wanting to do it. In fact, most of the time I'm using the mixed reality features, I'm mostly doing it outside. Yeah, I know. Even I'm going outside. That's, that's how you know it's bad. So again, this is not a review video. This is more of a critique of a feature in kind of the current state we're in. And why I believe people are really excited to take this thing and, you know, do the stuff outside in the Starbucks thing. Or go to Disney World like I did while wearing it. Yeah. So first of all, Quest 3 is obviously a, a standalone device. So it makes sense for you to be able to want to bring it anywhere you want. Set it up, do all that stuff. That's kind of the big, only big benefit of standalone is you sacrifice a lot of the processing power of a PC just so you can have that mobility and then have everything run on your head. Now with the advent of mixed reality or all the AR stuff, it kind of adds a new level where you can just kind of see your environment no matter where you're at. Now the problem with the Quest 3 or really just the beginning problem is the Quest 3 has four megapixel per eye cameras, which are okay, but they vary heavily on how bright the environment is. Now, the importance of lighting for really how well your Quest headsets would actually run is nothing new. They've always been running on camera-based tracking, and based on how bright or dark your environment was, your actual tracking uh, situation might not work, in fact, if it got really dark. But we're in a new kind of age with, with the addition of mixed reality where it doesn't only just affect your tracking, it heavily affects how well you actually see if you want to see your actual real-life environment which I do feel there is a lot of benefits to this that also goes toward the advantage of people wanting to take it outside and use it. Let's take my room, for example. It's a pretty okay, but very messy room. Uh, I can use mixed reality in here, but I would have to turn on all my studio lighting and open my window during the daytime hours if I really want a actual good experience that doesn't have a bunch of like ants buzzing around my past review, that, that grain. However, if I'm already in this room, I'm kind of tempted to want to use my monitor, my full PC setup to do the things I normally do, this sort of productivity idea. And there's virtually no benefit, almost at all, except maybe having more screens, to use my Quest headset in my actual room where my PC is over actually just using my monitor, keyboard, and the whole setup that's here already. In fact, when I'm at home in my office, that's probably when I would want to start doing some of my productivity stuff in a VR environment. Because my PC's here, I can render much more beautiful environments than I can on my standalone headset. So, yeah. It's also an important reminder when you're watching some of these videos I'm recording for my Quest 3's pass-through directly on the device. It always looks way better in 2D than it does in the actual headset through the lenses. Which is weird because, like, that's the opposite problem, usually, where VR looks usually a lot better when you are wearing and playing a game than the 2D video, so that's, huh. But it's still not perfect, and I think it's mostly to do with the software platform that Meta has been building over the past few years that actually feels like they've been completely blindsided from all these people wanting to do all these sort of 2D flat apps in their actual MR environments, and especially outside, standalone. So on the MetaQuest software itself right now, the operating system, there's not many useful 2D apps to use except for maybe the actual internet browser that's built in. And in my opinion, let me just say right now, that internet browser is so bare bones and awful that I wish we had anything else. And this is frustrating because the actual MetaQuest OS is running Android already. So you can actually sideload actual 2D Android apps that you would run on your phone, tablet, or Android TVs, for example. The best example I have here is I actually sideload the Steam Link application 
so that I can actually remote into my PC from home while I was sitting at Magic Kingdom actually doing all my PC stuff while plugging in my keyboard that I also brought with me to the Quest. And it was pretty awesome that I was able to resize the window and do all that stuff all from my headset without anyone seeing what I'm looking at or what I'm doing on my computer and just having as much variability with that as I want. And it was also a very beautiful day, a beautiful environment, and everything was working perfectly. There's a really huge superpower just being able to do something as simple as that. Being able to go wherever you want, outside, indoors, or whatever, and just access what you normally do on a daily basis. It's the promise that Quest Pro was saying that they were going to be able to do. However, the Quest Pro's pass-through was so awful that no one even bothered with doing that. Like, like maybe a few people did, but the overwhelming majority of people just didn't. And you can see that because you're seeing a ton of people taking their Quest 3s outdoors and doing all these videos, and there was like almost nothing. Radio silence for the Quest Pro because the usability of Pastor is getting to the point where it's just way better and, and actually useful for some people. Now, there's also some gripes I have really in general with like the current stage we're in because a lot of these things are just going to get better over time as the hardware gets better. Like the main reason why I think the actual uh, pass through quality is so dependent on lighting is because even though they're four megapixel cameras, which is honestly acceptable, the pixel sizes are very tiny. So the amount of light that these aperture uh, on the pixels themselves can let in is very low and which is why it's just so much better to go outside with these things. But there's still a bit of processing that I feel is lacking or not even just processing but the platform with the processing uh next time if I do this like idea of going somewhere that I think is really relaxing and peaceful I'm gonna want to bring something like a Steam Deck or something to connect to my Quest 3 just for that extra processing power but also because it's on the platform of all the apps that I normally use every day so while I could go around and try to find the APKs for random Android apps it's still not as beneficial still as just having like an idea of a processing battery battery powered puck that already does all the stuff I do every day and just streaming that or connecting that to my Quest 3 and doing these things. It, it, it's You're so close to that capability already and the value there is sky high for the people that see what's going on. Now there's also something that's like a huge nitpick, but I really wish there was an ability to have the windows follow you if you're walking around slowly at least. I, I know there, these companies are very terrified of people walking around places with the headsets on because they might do something stupid and cross a street, a busy street. But if you're in a park or something, you just want to walk around, you kind of have to grab the windows that are floating around you and bring them with you, which, okay, that's cool, you can do that, but sometimes the tracking doesn't keep up and all this other stuff. It'd be nice if you'll have like a float around you mode that just follows you as you go places. Because I, I do think that is the end goal for, for the AR stuff, right? To be able to walk around everywhere and do these things while having your hands completely free. But there's currently just no support for that in the software. And, it, and I, I have a feeling it's purely because people, the people are terrified of uh, legalities with this issue. But I, I also feel if people are terrified of this now... I'm not sure at what point they're going to stop being terrified of this idea where people will want to walk around and do things while wearing mixed reality headsets. Like, you got to rip the band-aid at some point. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because it's too early and they think it's going to cause a big, woo, it's going to kill everyone, media frenzy, and they just think, uh, yeah, we don't want that this early on in the industry. But um, either way, I think people are shocked at how much people are trying to use mixed reality outdoors um, compared to indoors, but I, I really think it's actually currently with the current technology the way you want to use it because it's just a lot more pleasurable experience at least in my situation again my whole house it's it's got okay lighting I, I thought before I got the the quest 3 but even when I just like turn on all the lights um and especially at nighttime things just don't look as good and especially when the I, I think when the lighting is not as good the shutter speed might be way uh slower or or whatever to kind of overexpose the image a bit and then you start moving your head and and there's a little bit of wobble and lag and blur going on when you move your head. So again, this high exposure, I don't want to redo all the lighting in my house just so I can do MR. I'd rather just go outside, uh, take all the capabilities of the standalone platform and like all the, pretty much the main benefit that it has being a standalone headset and do that. But there's still so many steps I think um, at least Meta's headset needs to take to really take advantage of it because I think it's a really, really powerful tool, like super powerful. I think it's really useful. 
Um, but until they do some of these things, like have 2D apps on their store, maybe like a whole platform that they're partnered with to do that, um, it's just going to make me want to use outside devices like a laptop or, or like, a, like a Steam Deck or something. And I really don't want that because that just adds a whole other place in my bag that I got to bring. And you kind of lose some of that mobility factor of it. Which is why I really dream of someone making just a like like a, a laptop that's actually without a screen because at that point you don't need a screen, right? You just have the processing and, and the, the, the Wi-Fi directly connected to your actual headset that does all the display stuff for you. And it'd be a great experience. Um, but still, yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about my experience yesterday and really the past week and how I do think using these devices outside is pretty cool. Like I re really, really recommend it. Go somewhere safe, like a park or something that's on a beautiful day. And just tap into your PC or, or maybe do some of the browser stuff that you would normally do in a, uh, like a phone browser on the, the crappy Quest browser and just do it. You'll have a good time, I think. I hope. Well, let me know. All right. Bye.